One of the great things about coming to see live theater at TheatreWorks is not only do you see an actual live theater performance with some of the best actors in the region and indeed some of the finest actors in the country, but that you get to see them very much up close and personal. This is a wonderful, flexible, and above all, intimate space. There's something magical about being in the same place at the same time with everybody in the room experiencing the same thing. There's an electricity and an excitement in that air that you can't duplicate on a screen. We seat only 200 people you know, per night, so it makes it a very special experience. We try and do the very best plays that we can find, and we try to do them for the broadest audience possible. We want to make them affordable, available, accessible, and vibrant for everybody and anybody who can come and see. I am a self-confessed Shakespeare maniac, and people are always ask that question, you know, well, why is Shakespeare so much greater than anybody else? But Shakespeare actually is greater than anybody else by kind of universal consensus. There's a reason for that. I think that Shakespeare is someone who identifies within us what is most human and what's most precious and what's most full about human life, especially our richest and best humanity. And indeed, he does sometimes hurt your brain to read. But then again, he wasn't meant for the page. He was meant for the stage. Which together is abandon the society of this female or cloud down perish stiff. Or better understanding, I will kill thee. There's nothing like the sound of an audience laughing together um, at, at, at real people. And, there's, and, and you can just feel it. You feel it in the air. You feel what happens to, to everybody, not only the people on stage, but the people in the audience. And you feel how this everything just suddenly kind of goes into hyperspace or something, or hyper life. <laughs> it's pretty fabulous. In some ways, the most challenging is the most fun, which is the, the dreaming about what we're going to do and then putting it all together. And working with our artistic director and imagining what we're going to do not only tomorrow, but what we're going to do five years from now. Well, we're just starting our next season, and we always start with Shakespeare, which is kind of our flagship enterprise. As You Like It is a play about many things, and it has tons and tons of issues that are all just as alive now as they ever were, I think. Probably the most salient example, the one that you know jumps really out at you, comes through the character of Rosalind. Playing Rosalind is a bit of a challenge because she starts out as a woman of the court and she turns into a woman playing a man in the forest, which initially the idea happens because she's trying to protect herself. Were it not better, because that I am more than common tall, that I did suit me all points like a man. When she gets to Arden, she has to pretend to be a man to get the man that she's in love with to talk to her. You go through a lot of different layers of, I'm a woman, but I'm pretending to be a man, but sometimes if Orlando says something that catches me off guard because I'm in love with him, my feminine side will show, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> but other times when, I, when Rosalind becomes more aware of making people know that she's a gentleman, she gets a little, a little more masculine, I guess. What you discover is an actor doesn't think the way uh, writers think. An actor thinks, where did I come from? Why am I doing this? Why am I here now? My influence for, for Ganymede, for the masculine side of Rosalind, I guess comes from a lot of different men as they interact, and especially young boys. I just try to make Ganymede gesture a little, not so gracefully, just a little more aggressively. If you're going to be a woman playing a man, you can't really expect to be a 40-year-old man when you get there. You have to kind of be teenager. One of the best parts about playing Rosalind is that she always gets a little bit of freedom, both as her and as him, as Ganymede. They always get a little bit of range to play within the performance, and things kind of hit you differently each time. She's a sort of saucy lackey, as Shakespeare says, kind of a smart street kid, and she's really charming. And we never worried about Jane's femininity, even though she spends most of the time in the play as a boy, because uh, she's lovely. I mean, she's a former Miss Nebraska, for God's sakes, but she can also speak Shakespeare, so beat that. This play brings up, I guess, uh, quite a few issues as far as feminism is concerned. Once she gets married at the end, Rosalind doesn't say very much. I've heard feminist criticism of it saying, why does she get married and then shut up? But I really think it's more that she's, you know, just enjoying the moment. I don't think she gets shut down or trapped as a woman. And she does, she gets to say, she gets to end the play, which again, isn't really common for a woman in Shakespeare.
Rosalind has more lines than any other woman in Shakespeare, and she's arguably one of Shakespeare's best and greatest creations, up there with Falstaff and Hamlet and Othello and a few others. The result of this kind of gender blending is really pretty astonishing and pretty relevant. But you know, as usual, Shakespeare was ahead of us. It's tragic and it's comedic and it's touching and it's heartbreaking all at once. I like to do Shakespeare because it, it, it really utilizes all the skills that you have. It really, I, I compare it to doing a musical. You know, you gotta sing, dance, act. And Shakespeare is the same kind of thing. You gotta use every tool that you have available to make this just work and to dig into it because the text is so rich you want to give it everything you possibly can. I wouldn't have it any other way. I love working with a lot of creative people. They're challenging and you can challenge them back. It's not really easy but it's it's a lot of fun. I think any audience who comes to Shakespeare will have a good time. I think the stories are applicable to today and they're really stories about human nature and about the problems of humanity. They're stories that will never be too old to be told. I really don't think that there's anything like it. I don't think there's a substitute for it. I don't think a community can be healthy without live performance. And uh, so we're kind of in the happiness business, you know. Um, there's life, there's liberty, and there's a pursuit of happiness. And we're in the pursuit of happiness business. What we're doing here is pure entertainment. There's eight times a year that you're not going to find anything like it in our region.